Hello, I'm back in Gravity Falls with Hawkeye, and today I'm going to finish this toy box. But before I do, I want to take a moment to let you know what's coming next, because my plans have changed a bit. Originally, I was going to return to my Disneyland series next and build Tomorrowland, but Gravity Falls turned out to be a shorter series than I was expecting, and I'm still making some tweaks to Tomorrowland, which means it isn't quite ready yet. So I'm going to move on to a brand new toy box that I've been working on, and we'll do Tomorrowland after that. But don't worry, this will be a short series, only about six episodes or so, so you won't have to wait very long for Tomorrowland. Besides, I think you might like this new toy box. I'll be posting the trailer for it on Wednesday, so stay tuned for that. But for today, let's finish up Gravity Falls, and we'll begin by adding Gideon and his goons to the Tent of Telepathy. This isn't a mission per se, but I wanted to include Gideon in my toy box because I thought it'd be cool if, when you visited his tent, he sicked his goons on you to chase you away. And so I've already placed the creativity toys that I'm going to need. So let's go over those really quick. So I've placed five locators, as you can see, as well as an enemy wave generator, a text displayer, and a dynamic trigger. And I've already placed a townsperson out here, and I would have liked to have done him dynamically, but uh, this particular townsperson, which serves really well for uh, stand-in for Gideon, um, you can't generate him with the friendly wave generator or <laughs> the friend generator. But you'll find him under the 1.0 playset townspeople. He's the man on the street, and he looks pretty close to Gideon, like you see him on the sign and in the cartoon. Um, but again, he's uh, not able to be generated dynamically, and I need to be able to connect some things up to him, so uh, I don't even think I should use a replayer to try to put him down. But uh, he's from the Incredibles playset, by the way, in case you were wondering where he comes from. So that's who I'm going to use for Gideon. And again, this isn't a mission per se, but we'll set him up sort of like a mission giver. So on a dynamic trigger, we're going to do a new actor connection. We'll connect that up to our Gideon-like townsperson here. He'll be our actor. And on this, uh, on the properties for this dynamic trigger, the target needs to be the connected actor. And the trigger distance I'm going to set to be 4. All right. For the text displayer, under the properties, we'll set the text duration to four and the text style to banner. And then for the enemy wave generator to create his goons, I've already configured the wave and I've added in the barrel costume so you don't have to watch me scroll through that list. And I'm going to set the count on him to 5. And under the properties, we're going to, uh, let's see, we'll leave that off. Countdown enabled is off. We're going to take the generation delay to 0, and the rest of those will be off. And then, oops, on the enemy wave generator, you want to connect up to each of those locators like I'm demonstrating here. And as you can see, I've already hooked it up to the other locators. All right, so on the dynamic trigger then, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player, any. We're gonna come over first to our text displayer and under the warning category, he's gonna say, get out of here. And on the text displayer, a new logic connection. When any text is displayed, we'll turn around and turn off the dynamic trigger because we only want to do this once, not every time the player comes to see Gideon. And then on the dynamic trigger, the other thing it should do is not only display the text, but we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come over and generate the wave 
on the enemy wave generator. And there we go. That's pretty much it for Gideon. Again, it's not a mission, but if you walk up to talk to him, he'll sick his goons on you, so he's at least represented in the toy box. And at this point, you can move all of the toys below the terrain, and I'm not going to demo this battle because you saw it in the playthrough video. All right, so that's it for the Tent of Telepathy. Now let's come over to the Mystery Shack, and there's one more attraction I had over here at the fair, and it was the Climbing Tower. And I've already placed two Creativitoys, an Object Generator, and a Locator. And to build the tower, it's pretty easy. We'll come down first of all to Building Sets Group 4, and we're going to use this platform piece from the Pirates of the Caribbean playset. And I'm going to put two of those on top of each other, just like that. And, uh, okay. Sorry, I had to get my uh, <laughs> screen grab for it. And then the couch cushion, which is from the uh, Inside Out playset. We'll put this down below. This is what they'll use to jump up and get up there. And then we need a flagpole on top. So back to the platforming toys. I believe this is where it's at. We have to go to the right to get there. Pass all, past all the ledge hangs. There we go. And we'll go ahead and put this on top. Right like that. And then we'll pick up the... Now well, before we pick up the locator, let's go ahead and connect up the object generator. Alright, now we can pick this up and put it up on top of the flagpole. Like that. And there's really not any logic you need for this. Just come to the properties for the object generator and turn on auto spawn pickups. And that puts a random pickup up on top of the flagpole. So if the player can get up there, they can get a toy. And you can climb that thing as many times as you want to get whatever toy is put up there. Okay. So that's my climbing tower. I had wanted to include something else at the fair here, but I didn't really have the room or the memory to build another carnival game, so this is what I came up with. And it's a simple challenge, and it's got a reward at the end, so I like that. And then we just need to add a few finishing touches. Uh, at the Mystery Shack, let's put in a couple of golf carts that the player can use to get around with and race. And I'm putting these in last because they take up some memory. But you'll find these underneath the ground vehicles drawer if you've unlocked them. And we'll park them right here at the Mystery Shack. And you can see as I place that, the memory jumped a little bit. I'll put one for each player. So now they have a way to get around the toy box a little bit quicker. And you can do the driving race with them. And one thing I forgot when we were doing the build exercise was the lumberjack. So I'm going to come out over here. And you'll find him under building sets group 7. It might have been faster to go the other way. And again, if you've unlocked this, I think he's from the uh, Toy Box Speedway game. So you need to unlock him with that. And then for the race, we need the vehicle weapon generators. And the track is really too small for boost pads, so I'm not going to worry about those. But we'll come back up to the Creativitoys drawer. And if we go to the right, we'll find it here. <clears throat> and I'm going to place it along here somewhere. Uh, we'll put three of them along here, like that. And it just makes the race a little bit more interesting. It's kind of a generic race. Once again, you have to turn on these toys in order to use them. Just 
placing them in the toy box isn't enough. But the racetrack is here, just you need roads in the toy box and it gives you something else to do. And uh, you can just race around and that's okay, but those weapon generators make things a little bit more interesting. And if you really want to make it crazy, you can put some out here on this corner of the toy box as well. And that will uh, mean that you'll be shooting each other all through the race. But I didn't do that on mine. I thought that was uh, sufficient. So that's my Gravity Falls toy box. And we're done with that. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this series, or at least found it helpful. If so, please hit the like button and leave a comment to let me know before you go. Also, a quick reminder for those of you who are building this toy box on your own systems, I've got logic diagrams on my blog to help you connect the Creativa toys, so be sure to check those out. The link for today's episode is in the video description. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, just click my photo in the lower right corner. Have a great day!